Hello, this is Shiley from Sheepishly Made. Today we're going to be doing uh, the Highland Cow wool painting tutorial. Um, this will be in two parts. So this is beginning of part one, and the part two will also be available here on the channel. If you have any questions, just uh, leave a comment or you can send me a message on Facebook or Instagram. So let's get started. For supplies today, um, I am using a six by eight inch sheet of um, wool felt fabric and that's what we'll be felting our picture onto. So there's a variety of colors I use for this project. Um, a couple different shades of brown and like a more bronzy type um, brown and then in the mountains in the background, there's some blues and purple, a um, couple different shades of green, some tan, white, blue, um, a little bit of everything. So if you're using one of my kits, <clears throat> you will have all the colors and supplies needed. I have um, a couple different felting needles. Um, I have a couple um, fine felting needles. I have 40 spirals there to use for my fine work and then I have some um, 36 38 triangle and I'll be using my multi needle tool here and there um, on different parts of the project I also have um, I'm just using a sharpie marker I'll just use this real lightly in the beginning to um, outline some of the shapes so to get started here, um, I would recommend um, you can either have, you know, a picture of this or if you're watching the video, you can go off the video as well um, to outline the cow here. So I'm just going to take my marker and it will... And you just lightly, I'll leave just enough um, so you can see. So the top of um, my cow's head here is about a third from the top of the pre or the felt here, and about a third away from this side. So I'm just going to make the top of the head first, and then I'll come down this side. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect, just kind of so you can get an outline started. So I'll come down, and then you'll have a leg. This side of the head will come down and then I'll be the back. I have a pretty long back. And you can always change this as we go. So I round it down into the leg off the back and like I said we can always change this it's not exact I usually edit a little bit here and there when I'm doing these um, and you can cover up where you did the marker so these cows are pretty deep chested and then you'll have another leg here Kind of like that. And we'll have one here and one there. And I'm not going to really do the horns here. Um, not quite yet. Not until we felt a little bit on this. So that's kind of the basic shape. You don't have to be exactly perfect, just edit on the way. And 
And now we're going to take um, a little bit of our one of our darker colors here, this darker brown. And we're just going to take a little bit at a time. We're just going to fill in the body shape first just to give it a nice base color. So you can use your coarser felted needles for this. <clears throat> And just add a little bit at a time. You don't want the a lot of wool on your um, wool paintings when you're creating them. And remember, as you're felting on to your wool fabric here, you just want to push your needle far enough in that it just goes through the fabric. You don't want to push it into your mat very far. And just add a little bit at a time. I think I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Just going right down into the leg. And since I shifted, um, I went longer on the body, so I, everything shifted back a little bit. So I'm not going to use that mark. I'm going to use more of this mark for the other leg. Okay, so I have the main shape of the body done. So I'm just going to add a little bit more right here. <clears throat> As the shoulders, the back will go up into the shoulders, and then your head is right attached to your shoulders, but he's facing this way, so it looks a little different. Just filling in a little spot. Okay. So I just did the two legs here because the other two legs are behind. So I'm just going to make it a little darker. So I'm going to take this other shade of brown here. And a little bit <clears throat> of the color we were just using. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my black, like that, and I'm going to blend these together. And I'm going to do this just by hand. So what you do, um, you take the wool by the very ends here, and you just pull it apart and lay it on top of the other fibers again and just pull apart again. It's not an exact blend, but the more you do it, the more it will blend.
color is blended enough for me. Um, it's going to be darker than the rest of that color on the cow. So I'm just going to add it in here where the right behind the other leg. And then you want to make sure that you don't go all the way down to match where the bottom of the other leg is because this is the leg that's behind. It's on that side. So the way the cow is standing, that's the perspective um, you'll see, because it's this one's farther back in the distance. And we'll just do the same thing for the front. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to felt the background first. So we're going to work on this grassy um, part first. And if you notice, it's only up to just below the back um, is where the grass line is. So some different shades of green here. All right, so with some different shades of green. And then I'm going to want a little bit of a light tan. So I'm going to start with the lightest shade first and I'm going to take a little bit of this you actually use quite a bit for this part so you want to make sure you have enough and then I'm going to take a little bit of my tan and I'm going to do this in small sections, but I'm going to blend these two colors a little bit. So I'm going to start by just taking, you want to do a little bit at a time. And just lay it out. And I'm going to start felting that down. <clears throat> okay, so this part's nice and flat. It's all felted down fairly well. So we're going to transition into um, a new color, which is just this, uh, the green that we use, but I'm just going to use the green itself. So we'll do the same process, lay it out where we want it, and then we'll felt it down. So to make this a nice smooth transition, taking a little bit of this green that we're using and just laying it thin across um, both sections. And I'm just going to felt that on top. It's kind of so I can see through it. Okay, now we're going to add a darker green color. And I'm just going to lay this out 
And this one will take it up to just below like the line of the back there. Okay, so we've got all the green finished. Um, if your colors are um, not trans transitioning well, you can always blend two colors together um, and lay it over top of where they meet for each, you know, gradual color change there. Now we are going to move on to making um, the mountains in the background. But first, we need to figure out where the horns are going to be so we don't felt um, where those are. So we're actually going to take some white wool and make those horns first before we do the mountains. We're just going to do a little bit and um, that way we can always add more later. So you just need a little bit of white. And this is, the white I'm working on with is a pretty long staple, so I'm just going to fold it in half so it's more manageable. So the horns come out of the side here, so you want to put them right, right here just um, below the top of the head on each side. And I know it's harder to see because it's so white. Um, but I'm just going to gradually felt out that way. I'll make a little bit of line here. So they come out and then they curve up and out. I'm just using a little bit of wool and you want them to be fairly thin compared to like the legs and whatnot and it's okay if they're not exactly even because a lot of times their horns are not exactly even in real life so you want to come to a point with the wool it doesn't have to be exactly perfect because we can shape it along the way okay I'm gonna do the other one Okay, we have the horns felted um, just about where we want them. And now we can uh, move on to making the mountains. So I'm gonna use um, some of the darker colors for this. So I have um, a little bit of purple and a dark blue and a brighter blue. So I'm actually going to um, I'm going to use the purple here first and we will make the mountains and then we'll add some color to it and this is kind of more of a freehand um, type of thing but you just want to make some like hills in the background so I'm going to make kind of the outline first with my darker purple
All right, so there's one. And then I'm going to do another one that goes that way. So now that you're getting close to the horns, you just got to, um, you just felt right up close to them, not on top. Just do a little at a time. I'm going to hop to the other side. Okay, so I, now I've got two basic mountains here, and I'm just going to add um, a couple little ones off to the side. And I'm actually going to do those in this darker blue color just so we can distinguish between the two. Okay, so I've got my little pieces in the mountains here on the sides. And now we're going to um, give them a little shading so they um, have a little bit more depth to them. So to do that, um, first we're going to add a little bit of some of the dark blue um, mixed with a little bit of black. I'm going to blend those together. I always start with a little bit because I can always make more. Just going to take a little and I'm going to put it on this mountain here, just kind of where it meets the other one. It doesn't have to be like a thick thick line and kind of spread it out make it a little see-through just so it gives it some darker color there just real thin just a little layer and then I'll take just some of the dark blue and I'll lay that right kind of next to that color. I'm going to take a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the purple. Okay, and we are going to do um, kind of the same thing, um, but we're going to use the just a little bit of black. I'm taking just little wispy pieces of it. And I'm going to do this on um, this back little one here. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the purple. I'm going to add that on the top here. 
and just give that a little bit of a lighter color. And then I'm going to give the base of the mountains um, a little bit darker as well with some of the, the dark blue um, you can use to give that a little darker color. Okay, so that's about um, it for the mountains. Um, if you want to, you know, do a little bit more or less, you can. Um, it's just however you like it. But now I'm going to fill in um, the sky in the background. So I have a real bright blue, like a lighter blue, and then a um, darker blue. And I'm actually going to blend the two together. I'm going to take some of each and we'll blend that together. Nice um, in between color and it gives it a little bit more of uh, just some variance in the shade when you blend. It's going to take a little bit at a time. Just lay it down. Let's see, I'm gonna take a little bit and go around the, the tip of this horn here. Okay, I've got the sky kind of filled in there. Um, I want to make some of it a little lighter, so I'm actually going to take that light blue and just take a little bit at a time, real thin pieces, and lay it over the top so you can see um, the, the darker color underneath. Last thing we'll do with the sky is we'll add some clouds to it. So you want to take some of your white and just little pieces like we were doing with the rest of the sky and you'll just set them along in the sky, felt them in. So that about does it for um, part one. I'm going to do a second part for the detail on the cow. Um, so there will be a second tutorial here. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And we'll see you next time. Happy felting!